Hello and welcome to another audio commentary done by Luminous. And today we're not doing a Dota commentary. We're going to be doing something different. But before we get started on that, a little bit of announcement and you know messages from me. I want to first thank you for everyone uh, who has been subscribing and commenting. I know I haven't been exactly too diligent on my Dota commentaries, so I apologize on that. But right now school has started and uh, I'm in my last year in college. So I am studying the doom of humanity called a GRE. And that's been taking a lot of time away, uh, a lot of my free time away from you know Dota and, and my social life. So yeah, today I got a couple hours free, so I'm gonna do some uh, commentary for you guys. Or uh, no, I'm not gonna do a commentary for you guys. I'm gonna do something different. But um, yeah. Also on that, uh, um, I have this is my like a hundred subscriber. I think I passed that a bit. So uh, this is a bit special. So thank you guys. I didn't. I did not think I would ever reach this. Uh, milestone I guess but uh, thank you guys for subscribing I'm hoping that more and more people will subscribe and I will uh, do more uh, Dota competitive uh, analysis and replay for you guys so once again thank you um, so today instead of doing a Dota commentary we're gonna be looking at something different uh, as you probably already know 6.63 has came out and um, not too long ago and uh, I played a couple games and I noticed that there's a lot of changes Actually, I'm sure all of you do as well. So definitely the competitive scene should change accordingly with the new map. And uh, I'm going to personally do a breakdown of how I think the competitive cha uh, scene will change. And of course, a fair warning goes out that, you know, I might not be the most expert when it comes to, you know, these uh, map nerf and map buffs and how that affects the scene. But I'm going to give uh, what I think is the, uh, you know, is the uh, correct uh, view, I guess. Yeah, but um, you know, don't don't bite me if you know what I say isn't in the absolute truth. Of course, um, I, I played a couple games, and uh, uh, I, I learned I learned a lot uh, from these games I played. But uh, I think for most of these changes, um, I think we have to kind of do a wait and see. Generally, a new map when it comes out, it takes about I don't know, maybe two weeks for this uh, um, for the scene to continue to evolve. Though it is always evolving, especially with the new versions. But um, uh, when a new map comes out, it usually takes a while to evolve, and people discover new strats and, and whatnot. So first of all, I'm going to look at all the heroes that are nerfed, um, and uh, how Ice Frog has dealt with a lot of complaints about some of the uh, Imba heroes, as you will. So the biggest nerf I have seen, uh, or, um, or, or the one that probably affects the scene the most, is the Clockwork nerf. Uh, Clockwork has uh, his uh, battery assault uh, damage decreased. And uh, I think the rocket flare vision has uh, been decreased as well. Probably not, you know, not that much. It will make Clockwork a weaker hero in the um, early game, where he probably can't get kills as easily from one to five. But once he gets six and he hooks to you, um, especially with teammate support, uh, Clockwork is still a beast in ganks and not. Um, he's probably uh, team fight has damage has been. Um, I don't think his team fight. Uh, has been affected too much because Clockwork is supposed to go in the middle of things and draw damage and just throw out a lot of annoying battery assault. The decreased damage in battery assault should not matter that much in my opinion. Uh, I think the mini sun is more worth the damage. So I don't think this Clockwork nerf is that much of a nerf. If in capable, in capable hands like Kuroki, um, Clockwork is still a beast of a hero to be careful. So I don't think this is really a nerf. Um, uh, so the Undying nerf is, I don't know, I have a mixed feeling about it. It's supposed to be a nerf, but not really. So they reduce the healing of uh, the Undying from, like, I don't know, half. No big deal, because um, that's not the best properties of Undying's ultimate. I, I think the best property is, it's, is the amplified damage. It's the slow. And, you know, you reduce the heal, like, big deal. I don't, yeah, not, not a big nerf. Uh, the bigger nerf, I think, is that the decreased armor and tomb tombstone dropping from us uh, 10 to 4. Now that's a big nerf because now heroes could, you know, I guess, better focus down on the tombstone before before they usually kind of ignore it because it takes too long to kill it. But now, uh, yeah, it will drop pretty fast. And tomb uh, and dying without tombstone is pretty much a just not a very special hero other than his ultimate. So uh, I think this is kind of a, a big nerf on the tombstone, but not so much on the healing. Another nerf I notice is the Bane Elemental nerf. Uh, probably another not a big, uh, too big of a nerf. Uh, they increased the uh, the mana cost for his ultimate. You know, um, 
I guess it's okay. Bane and Lamento is probably a lot of times uh, constructed by his mana use, especially most mains nowadays play a very, uh, I guess, support main. They buy wards and, and stuff. But, I mean, if you get some intelligence items on the Bane Elemental, there's, the mana cost nerf isn't uh, that big of a deal. Probably should, um, Bane probably can't cast as much spells in a team fight. but generally Banes get focused down so fast that they never really, you know, get, get able to cast all four of their skills. So, uh, I don't know. I don't think this is a real nerf. And there's like pretty weak uh, nerf as well. The, there's a Viper MS nerf, which you know doesn't matter that much since Viper has could orb walk, especially when he's level six and drop an ultimate on you. Viper still has insane laning abilities with his uh, Nether Toxin or whatever it's called. So uh, Viper is still probably gonna be a uh, scene in competitive scenes. Enchantress has a decreased strength gain nerf. Uh, Enchantress is never really uh, much of a carry hero nowadays. Most players that uh, play her jungle. Um, so, you probably see less of her, but um, I think she's still um, worth the pick being able to jungle, get, freeze up a lane, and comes out with the Imba Hill. But she is going to be a lot weaker. Uh, there is a Darkseer nerf. Darkseer um, usually plays a lot of uh, crowd control, and they completely change her uh, his uh, replica, which makes him more of an ultimate hero, in my opinion. Uh, they he, they um, kind of buff the replica. If you drop it down in the middle of a crowd, it, it goes crazy. It now only replicates uh, enemy heroes, and it deals damage to enemy heroes, so it's considered a nuke as well. So, I think this nerf on the Dark Seer, you might have to wait and see a bit. But, um, I personally think that uh, they don't they didn't nerf Dark Seer enough. Dark Seer is extremely well in crowd control, great in ganking, and uh, could probably jungle as well. So, um, Darkseer shouldn't be nerfed that much. Most teams still like him as kind of a rogue surpi surprise hero to draw at the other team. So, look look to see more Darkseer lately. Oh, I um, almost forgot. One of the biggest nerfs is the Batrider nerf. Now, Batrider is no longer, you know, extremely Imba in lane. He's still Imba, but not, you know, as... Uh, I think they, they nerf his, the, uh, his base damage by, like, 12. So, Batrider, um, you know... I think they changed also his uh, sticky napalm now is more for sl uh, slow um, and uh, increased mana cost. So you probably won't see uh, um, the bat rider spam just as much, but he will spam a lot still with the napalm and you know last hit and everything. But with the decreased damage, uh, base damage on the bat rider, should see less of it. Um, still, bat rider is a really good hero in disrupting team fight with his ultimate and. Um, his blast or whatever, and the uh, firefly is always cool. But yeah, a uh, viper, uh, not viper, bat rider should see less play. And there are some. Uh, uh, oh yeah, another nerf is the Lord of Avernus. Lord of, Lord of Avernus, uh, to my surprise, has been like bad material or first pick material nowadays, which I don't really get. I'm I'm sure a, lo a couple of you will reply and enlighten me on that. But now the biggest nerf I see on the Lord of Avernus is decreased range on his healing or death coil. Uh, from 600 to 300, which practically kills this hero because this hero, the only reason you want him is to heal, or at least the reason I, I think that most team want him is just to heal and to block burst damage. Now that you reduce his heal range, his uh, effectiveness in team fight just like dropped a lot. So probably, most likely, I would think Lord, Lord of Vernus will be picked a lot less. Um, there is a nerf on the Earth Shaker, decreased damage on the Echo Slam. Um, I think they have the damage on the corpse. Uh, no big deal. I think you want Earthshaker for more of a crowd control, uh, initiating team fight, dropping the multi uh, chain stuns. I don't think they really care. When I pick an Earthshaker, I don't really care how much damage he does. I just care about how how long I could uh, um, stun all my opponents. So I don't think this is a real nerf to Earthshaker. A really really interesting change to Nerubian Assassin. Um, uh, it's particularly the mana burn. Uh, it used to be, you know, uh, particularly numbers. I think level four it burns to uh, 260, but now they change it to um, at level four it burns four times of um, the hero's intelligence. I think this is a nerf. Uh, for example, at level seven, you, whoever you burn is 260, and that hurts a lot. But now, like if if I'm playing, I don't know, a really low intelligence strength hero. And by level 7, I have like, what, 30 intelligence? You get burned at 120 from me. Which is no big deal. I mean, it's still a lot at level 7. Um, 
but uh, I think it this has been a considerable nerf. But the other side of the coin is that it kind of scales with the game.